Welcome to the Cooner Report here on AM 680 WRKO and now on 93.7 HD2. It's 606. Good morning, Boston. 617 266 6868 is the number. You know, I got a, uh, before, we got some very good uh, culture stories, hard news stories um, coming up. Uh, but I got to tell you, before I get into the news of the day, Grace is off, I kid you not, to Montreal. She actually left yesterday. There's a family function. Uh, someone very close to the family is celebrating their 50th birthday. And so the whole, uh, my wife's clan is going to be there. Members on my side of the family are going to be there. And so, uh, you know, she took, she took Ashton. She took Ava. I couldn't go because I have an event and I hope to see many of you on Sunday at Mass Firearms. At Mass Firearms School. I'll be there from noon until two. So this was scheduled several months ago. And so I just, I wasn't able to go up to Montreal this weekend. Now, <clears throat> Grace tells me that when she drove, she arrived at about, ooh, six o'clock yesterday, six o'clock in the evening. She said the city is hopping. I mean, they want to take on the Bruins. They are obsessed. They're, they're hockey mad. She says there are Montreal Canadiens flags. There's a sea of them everywhere across the city on cars, out of houses, out of restaurants. I mean, you would think it's, a, it's, it's an impending invasion that they're getting ready for war. It's like a battle. And so now I want you to think about this. I could have said, you know, to my in-laws, I know this is very important to many of you, but, you know, I can't make it on Sunday. And since the Cooner, I mean, this weekend, because I got to work on Sunday, I got to do two hours at Mass Firearms, uh, greeting people and, and so forth. So my wife is not going to go up, because why should I be away from my wonderful wife and my two lovely kids? I miss them. I'm making a sacrifice for my in-laws. And you would think... My in-laws would be grateful. You think that they would say, Oh, what a nice guy the Cooner Man is. Look how nice he is, even though he's got to stay behind in Boston. I understand we have this intense hockey rivalry, the playoffs now. First game was yesterday. The Canadians won, but let that go. No, I want the Bruins to win. No, I definitely want the Bruins. I'm just saying the Canadians won. They won in double overtime. And so I said, so sadly they won, but let that go. So, now, Anne-Marie, Grace's older sister, my older sister-in-law, right? She's she's a, like a hockey fanatic. Her and my niece, Maria, like they love, they eat, live, and breathe the Montreal Canadiens. They love the Montreal Canadiens. They're like, they're hockey fanatics. So, Maria is so thrilled the kids are coming. Grace, her aunt, Grace is coming. Anne-Marie is like over the moon. She can't wait to see little Ava, little Ashton. So you would think that they would be grateful. You think that they would say, what a wonderful husband you have, Grace. Look at this incredible brother-in-law. Even though he's staying behind, because he has to, that he let the kids come up, he let the wife come up, even though he's going to miss them. And I really did miss them when I said bye to them yesterday. Honestly, my heart was breaking. And I'm going to now, what, they're going to be gone three, four days. I get a text message at about, ooh, 8.03. Okay, so the game was already underway, but ooh, at about 8.03. And it's my little Ashton. And I'm like, what, what is this? He seems to be standing on something. It's a Boston Bruins hockey shirt. And Marie had Ashton stomp on a Boston Bruins hockey shirt. I kid you not. And then sending it, texting it to me. Then I get other texts of Ashton and the other ones in the family tearing the shirt apart. And I'm like, this, this is how you pay me back? Th this. I deserve this for my generosity, my kindness, my compassion. That this is what I deserve. You basically kidnap my kid and turn him into a Montreal Canadiens fan. And suddenly now you have him stomping like some, almost like a jihadist, uh, stomping on a Boston Bruins uh, a hockey shirt. What's next? The American flag? Uh, this is, uh, this is, this is what I, this is what I deserve. And I was telling this to Brittany coming in today. I said, you know, this is the kind of respect that I engender in my family. 
I let my wife and kids go up, and before you know it, within eight hours, barely eight hours passed, my kid has now been held hostage, and he's stomping on a Boston Bruins T-shirt. Uh, obviously egged on by my uh, my sister-in-law Anne Marie and my and my niece Maria, and they're laughing. Ha 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 ha! Take this! Ha 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 ha! We've turned we've ta- turned your kid into a Canadians fan. <sighs> Listen, I got to tell you, I'm worried. Just before I get into this, I'm worried. I'll tell you why I'm worried. They are hungry. They want this thing. They want to beat the Bruins. I'm driving around. I don't see any Bruins flags. I'm listening to sports talk radio yesterday a little bit, and they're all talking like analysts. We're better on defense. I think we'd be better for checking. Now, Brittany said the game was really good last night. And, I mean, I love the rivalry. The rivalry is phenomenal. I think it's one of the best in sports where you have genuine hatred between both teams. It's great. It's incredible. But I'm telling you, they really want it up there. If my sister-in-law is sending me texts of my son being coerced and forced into stomping on the Bruins' uh, shirt, uh, they want this thing, and they want it bad. And I don't see the same kind of desire on our end. So, anyway, my friends, I just want to let you know, I will be at Mass Firearms on Sunday. Uh, my kids will not be there. My wife will not be there. No, the next will be sending me texts of uh, burning Bruins' shirts in effigy. Seriously, what, seriously, what's next? They're going to start sending me, uh, my Ashton's going to be lighting Boston Bruin t-shirts and flags. That's, that's going to be my next text over the weekend. My friends, a lot to talk about. Speaking of desecrating symbols. Speaking of desecrating symbols. This is an absolutely incredible story. Um, it actually tip, uh, officially broke on Monday, but I want to save it for Friday because I like to do more culture stories on Friday. And obviously now it's again in Colorado. There seems to be more and more controversies emanating out of Colorado. At Rocky Mountain High School in Fort Collins, Colorado, the principal there is now facing, I kid you not, a barrage of criticism from many very angry parents and residents. And you may say, Jeff, 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 why? What's the big deal? Okay, a principal in Rocky Mountain High School in Fort Collins, Colorado, is getting a lot of criticism. What's the big deal, Jeff? Every Monday, the students at Rocky Mountain High say the Pledge of Allegiance. However, this Monday, they made a deliberate change. Members, students, members of what they call the Cultural Arms Club, quote unquote, led the student body in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, not in English, but I kid you not, not even in Spanish. Which is basically now, I would say, almost becoming the second official language of the United States, but again, I digress. But actually in Arabic. So the students were told to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. This is sort of what it sounded like. And not only was it in Arabic, but they had to replace the words one nation under God with one nation, you guessed it, under Allah. <laughs> And so, um, and the principal, Tom Lopez, I mean, parents were livid. When they found out, the parents are livid. This is a huge story in Colorado. The parents are livid. Residents are livid. And I don't blame them. Now, point number one, okay, which is to me so obvious, but, you know, forget it now. We're living in the culture of death in the age of insanity. That's that's the USSA. We are now living in the United Socialist States of America. So in the USSA, it's the culture of death in the age of insanity. So when you basically live in a giant mental asylum, the most obvious normal things are considered very radical now, very extremist. The Pledge of Allegiance is a fundamental tenet of our patriotism. 
It is a fundamental tenet of the American identity. We pledge allegiance to this republic, to our constitution, and to this nation. One nation under God. And we put our hands on our heart. And we say it in English. And the reason why we say it in English is because English is the common, historical, unifying language of the United States. We are an English-speaking people. This is the language of America. To stand there and not recite the pledge in any other language but English is deeply insulting and offensive and frankly politically blasphemous. That's point number one. Point number two. This wasn't done because they're trying to... The reason why they were doing it is the under the reason of celebrating diversity and compassion and tolerance. So they said, well, to celebrate the diversity of the student body, uh, I guess because there were some Muslims in the, in the school, that we should sing it in Arabic and we should replace under God with under Allah. They're not celebrating the Christian Arabs in that school. Everybody knows that's why they're not seeing it in Arabic. It's obvious. They're doing it to placate the Muslim lobby and advance the Muslim agenda. And I understand, I get this from the libs all the time. Well, you think they're very smart when they text this or email this, but it really, it just shows you how ignorant they are. Technically, yes, the Muslims celebrate the same God as the Christians and the Jews. They just happen to call it Allah. So Allah is technically God. So they're saying when you say Allah or God, it's the same thing. Yes, but there's the fundamental difference. In theory, that's true. In reality, their Allah is different from our God because their Allah believes that basically Jesus was a hoax. That uh, Judaism is a gutter religion. So when they celebrate the Prophet Muhammad, who they believe wrote literally the words of Allah, the words of God in the Quran, that's why they believe it's a sacred holy book, uh, their God has a very different view of Christianity, of Judaism, of life, of the treatment of women, of I can go right across the board, of non-Muslims, than our God. So when they say Allah... They know exactly what they mean when they're saying Allah. They're advancing the Muslim agenda. That's why when terrorists blow themselves up, they don't say Allahu God, they go Allahu Akbar. Or whatever, they don't say God Akbar, they go Allahu Akbar. God is great. Allah is great. My friends, what is most revolting about this is that now, in America's heartland, our students are being indoctrinated, promoted, encouraged to not only deliver the Pledge of Allegiance in languages other than English, but check this out, to now recite it in Arabic. And just like the jihadists want to create a global caliphate where every nation is under Allah, now our students are actually say, being told to say the same thing. One nation under Allah. Let me ask you this. What would you do if these were your kids? If your kids were being told they had to cite the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic under one nation, under Allah, would you pull your students out? Would you be angry? Or would you say that this is just a celebration of diversity? 621 here on the great WRKO. 617-266-6868. 617-266-6868. Should we be citing the Pledge of Allegiance? In Arabic, I say no. What do you say, Boston? All of your calls. Next.
Welcome back to the Cooner Report 624 here on the great WRKO. Students at Rocky Mountain High School in Colorado, Fort Collins, this Monday recited the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic, pledging one nation under Allah instead of one nation under God. Students are absolutely, uh, many students were livid. Parents were very angry. Residents were angry. Is this the creeping Islamicization of our school system? The spokesman for CARE, which is really a front for the Muslim Brotherhood, Ibrahim Hooper, went on Fox News and said this is another example of anti-Muslim, anti-Middle Eastern bigotry on the part of Americans that they don't want the Pledge of Allegiance recited in Arabic and mentioning one nation under Allah. You know, I find it incredible how the likes of CARE still have access, frankly, to the media and to the government, this known terrorist front group. But again, I digress. You come to the United States, you assimilate to the American way of life. Now, if you want to sing songs in Arabic, do it in the privacy of your own home. God bless you. But in our school system, with our schools, the Pledge of Allegiance is recited in English, and we worship one nation under God. Period. Full stop. Notice how we have to keep accommodating everyone who keeps coming into our country, their cultures, their faiths, their traditions. But they can trample on our culture, our traditions, our faith. 617-266-6868 is is the number. My friends, enough is enough. This is the Islamic agenda through the back door, and it's time we said stop. Bill, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on the Kuna Report. Go. Jeff, I have supreme confidence that my children, 10 and 12, would not participate in that. They have been taught what Islam really is, what happens wherever it goes, and that it is simply this, a murder cult. It's no more and no less. Uh, Bill, so you're saying if your students were, they, they just wouldn't participate. Is that what you're saying? They would not participate, and they probably would be vocally against it. Good. Good. Thank you for that call, Bill. I'm just curious to everyone out there, if this was, let's happen in your kid's elementary school or high school, and they were told they had to recite the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic, to one nation under a law. What would your kids do? Would you be upset? What would you advise them to do? 617-266-6868 is the number. Personally, I would tell Ashton to just walk out. I would tell, if it was Ashton or Ava, I'd say, you walk out. If they do it in any other language but English, to any other God but God, I don't care about Allah and technically it is God. I'm not interested in that. My kids are not going to worship a Muslim god. You walk out, or turn your back, whatever, and then you call me, and I'm going to give the principal and the teacher the business. I'm going to give them the business, and if they keep doing this, they do it a second time, I'm pulling my kids out. That's Jeff Cooner. Gary, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on WRKO. Shoot. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, Gary. As the Tea Party terrorist, the best way to brainwash a nation is through the government school systems. You see the waste products that they are producing today. If those were my kids, they're too young right now, but when they get a little older, they're going to know about it. I would pull them out of school. I would tell them to walk out. And as a, a, a very concerned parent, Jeff, I would get the Koran and I would burn it in front of that school. And I'm going to tell you why. The Koran is a book of hate. It's death. You convert or die. Everywhere in this world where there is bombings and murders and beheadings, somewhere around there's always a Muslim around. Even though they say it's a very few Muslims that do it, they're always around when this happens. And I would expose this to the country because the media won't do it. And if that's what I had to do, Jeff, that's exactly what I would have to do. And let me tell you something. In Malden, Massachusetts, right now as we speak, it is not called the Pledge of Allegiance, Jeff, in the morning. It's called a moment of reflection. As not, I'm totally serious, Jeff. I am totally serious. 
and it's because you don't want to offend all, offend all the Muslims in Malden. And there's also no more bacon or ham on the menu, just like Subway just took it out of 200 stores after Michelle just got involved. It all comes from the top, Jeff. It flows downhill. It's from the White House. This was never happening under George Bush, and I don't care what anybody says. Uh, thank you for that call, Jerry. Uh, Gary. My friends, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic under Allah. Would you allow your students, uh, your, your kids to do it? What would you do if your daughter or son was involved? I want to hear from you. 617-266-6868-630 on RKO. Let's take it to Angela in the newsroom. Welcome back to the Cooner Report here on 6th uh, WRKO. It's now 637. Jeff Cooner, Boston's Bulldozer. 617-266-6868 is the number. You can text us at 680-680. A high school, Rocky Mountain High in Fort Collins, Colorado, is coming under immense fire and criticism. Public outrage over the fact that the students there, under the uh, sanction and approval of Principal Tom Lopez, uh, recited the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic, pledging one nation not under God, but under Allah. And according to a Principal Lopez, he says this is all part of an effort to increase diversity, to acknowledge the cultural differences within the school system. And as he put it, these cultural clubs ex uh, uh, seek to, quote, destroy the barriers that embrace the cultures that exist within the high school. What it really is, is an attempt, frankly, to destroy the barriers to Islam and to secretly embrace it through the back door. Remember when this country used to cite the Pledge of Allegiance in English? Remember when saying under God was never even controversial? And you say to me, oh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. But what about the atheist, Jeff? What about the agnostics, Jeff? No problem. If under God offends you so much, don't say the pledge. Sit down. Relax. It takes about, what, a minute to say it? Relax. Have a Tootsie Roll, take it easy, it's over within a minute, and we can move on with the school day. It is a fundamental tenet of the American identity and of our patriotism. And notice when it comes to these Islamists, we can never blaspheme against the Quran. We can never blaspheme against the Muslim faith. But they can blaspheme against America any day, every day. They can build a mosque near the site of Ground Zero on hollowed ground. They could stand there and begin to impose Sharia law as they're doing in communities across Michigan and in Dearborn. Or now they can force students and schools to basically have them cite the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic and under Allah. Now, um, a texter made a very, very good point. Actually, there's two different texts. I want to. I, I, the text machine is flying right now, so I can't track it down. But one said essentially, "Our God is different from their God." Yeah, technically, they say Allah is the same God as those of the Christians and Jews. In theory, yes. In reality, through the Quran, their God sanctions murder, according to the radical Islamists. According to the radical Islamists, their God sanctions jihad. Their God sanctions the uh, enslavement and mistreatment and oppression of women. So according to radical Islamists, their God is very different from the Judeo-Christian God. Another texter said, Jeff, Laura Ingram made a very good point about multiculturalism once. For all of this experimentation in multiculturalism, hyphenated Americanism, celebrating supposedly other diverse foreign cultures, what good has it given us? She's spot on. She's bang on. 
We have been forcing multiculturalism now on our students for 20 years. 20 years has become the official ideology of the United States of America. Let me ask you this. Are we more united now than we were 20 years ago? Has it economically benefited us? Has it culturally benefited us? Has it politically benefited us? Socially benefited us? We're now more divided, more polarized, more disunited. It is the disuniting of America. Maybe since the Civil War. So why do we continue to embrace it and practice it like it's somehow a state, a state religion? I've said it before and I will say it again. The key to this country's greatness, the key, what made us the greatest republic in the history of the world and what can only save this country again is one nation, one culture, one people under God. That diversity was never our strength. Unity is our strength. Cohesion is our strength. Patriotism is our strength. A common language, a common history, a common culture, a common tradition. That's what made America the greatest country in the world. And until we embrace that, again, my friends, like the Tower of Babel, we're going to be at each other's throats and you will see this country slowly disintegrate into pieces. Don't say you weren't warned because the Cooner Man warned you. What's next? The Pledge of Allegiance in French, in Russian, in Swedish, Vietnamese, Chinese. W where does it end? 617, what, what, one nation under Buddha? 617-266-6868 is the number. Dan, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on the Kuna Report. Go. Hey, Jeff. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you, Dan? I'm doing well. Listen, I just wanted to get your input on something that I've been thinking about. Um, I spent two tours in Iraq uh, doing operations around the Baghdad area. And uh, we, were, we were not allowed to go anywhere near any mosques. And a lot of times we would uh, <clears throat> we'd be confronted by terrorists, and they would run back into the mosque with no recourse from us. So my question to you is, it seems as if this idealism is stemming around the mosques in this area, and I'm curious as to what is our national security team doing to try to prevent any type of uh, radicalism within our own borders. And uh, uh, I'll just wait for your response. Okay, so thank, thank you, Dan. You, Look, you do. Thank you, Don. Dan, it's, this, it's a 64... Uh, Dan, thank you very much. It's the $64,000 question. And because of care, and because of the Saudi lobby... And because of the immense pressure groups being applied to the American government, hardly anything. How many terrorists have gone through the local mosques here in Boston and in Cambridge? Is anybody even looking at their literature? I mean, this is an open fact. Are they under surveillance? They should be under surveillance. I'll tell you this. If terrorists were coming through the corner report, if they had been working on my show... Let's say they were, quote, right-wing terrorists, domestic terrorists, like Harry Reid calls them. If I had domestic terrorists who ended up committing atrocious acts and bombings and murders and killings, who had been, let's say, producers or assistant producers on my show, the FBI would be on me like a cheap suit. The Cambridge Mosque, the big Boston Mosque, that's what's been going on here for over 20 years. Nothing. In fact, you have de Bla uh, Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, is now actively cutting off the NYPD surveillance program of many of the local mosques in the New York area. It's, it's suicide. They're now going to become obviously breeding grounds for Islamic jihadists. And now we're getting to the point... Where our own students, I bet you there's maybe one Muslim in that school. And, and, and well, suddenly now what, Colorado's become a hotbed of, of, of Muslim Americans? I bet you there's not maybe one or two students at Rocky Mountain High School in Fort Collins, Colorado. But now because there's one or two Muslim students, they got to recite the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic and go under Allah? 
by this logic. Because there are, what, five, six million Muslim Americans, Muslims in the United States? Every student now, by this logic, should be citing the Pledge of Allegiance in Arabic under Allah. It's obvious what's going on. It's the creeping Islamicization of America. Care is behind it. The Muslim Brotherhood's behind it. The Saudi, the Saudi government is behind it. And notice, I have to say this. I know it's politically incorrect. I know I'm going to get a lot of blowback for this. I want you to think about the previous waves of immigrants that came to America. The Italians, the Irish, the Poles, the Germans, the Vietnamese, the Chinese, the Japanese. I can run down a whole list. People from the Caribbean, people that come from Nigeria. How come the Muslims are the only ones that insist that the Pledge of Allegiance must not be said in English? How come they're the only ones that say it must be not one nation under God, but one nation under Allah? Did the Italians say we want to do the Pledge of Allegiance in Italian? Did the Jews, when they came, they said, oh, it has to be in Yiddish, or it has to be in Hebrew? And we don't want it under God. Technically, we want to call it Yahweh. Only them. Cite cultural and religious supremacy over the traditions and customs of America. Only them. It's always an issue. 617-266-6868 is the number. America, love it or leave it. If the English language is so offensive, hey, no one put a gun to your head. Go back. Go back to Saudi Arabia. If uh, if our Christ, Judeo-Christian heritage offends you so much, hey, hey, there's the door. Believe me, Pakistan will, 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 will take you back in with open arms. Michael, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on the Kuna Report, and welcome, sir. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks a lot. Um, I know it's so good to meet you down at F1. I was with a gentleman that came up to the end to ask you the Russian word. Um, oh, you're the one that... Oh, okay, yes, I remember you, Michael. Yeah. Okay, so my question is, I wonder on this whole thing, where's the separation of the church and state that all the liberals always want? By doing this, you've now promoted Islam in the schools. Uh, sorry, Michael, I missed that. They're promoting Islam in the schools? Yeah, no, they are, and they're doing it. Yeah, Michael, your phone was very bad. That's why we, we had to drop you, but I get your point. Uh, you're looking at textbooks? Look, look at textbooks now. Most textbooks, when they discuss the 9-11 terrorist attacks, do not mention the role of radical Islam. Most textbooks, when they talk about the Muslim religion and the Muslim faith, talk about it as a religion of peace. They don't mention, here, everybody knows about the Crusades. Okay, when you do a little bit of history, let's say high school history. But they don't tell you the history of Islam and how it spread in the Middle East and how it conquered Christians, and how it forcibly remove, uh, forcibly converted Christians and Jews, how it imposed massive ethnic and religious cleansing, how for centuries it was the uh, Muslim warriors, holy warriors, that conquered the Middle East, spread into Europe, invaded Spain, invaded Italy, invaded France, invaded Croatia, invaded Serbia, invaded Poland, invaded Romania, invaded Bulgaria. What do you think the Crusades were? Bernard Lewis, maybe the foremost scholar on the Middle East, said it, not Jeff Kuhner. It was a half-hearted, half-successful attempt to restore Christian lands from Muslim occupation. It was a defensive uh, 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 defensive military campaign. You read the textbooks. You don't get that. You don't get the truth. Christianity evil. The West evil. America evil. Islam good. 617-266-6868. Who's indoctrinating who? 650 on the great WRKO. Let's take it to Rush Limbaugh. Roll it, Brittany. Welcome back to the Corner Report. It's now 6.58 here on the great WRKO. Here's a great text. 
Good morning, Jeff. I have a Nigerian student who works for me as an intern. She received her citizenship on Wednesday of this week. She celebrated it and was proud that she was now an American citizen. It gave me goosebumps to hear her and see her with such glee. And yet we have Americans who hate even being here. What has happened to our country? 774. I know this is true. Because I had Nigerian neighbors when I lived in Washington, D.C., and I'm telling you, they're some of the best immigrants this country's ever had. Yomi, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on the Kuna Report, and welcome. Yes, uh, good morning. Hi, Yomi. Yes, um, I was, you know, I just wanted to uh, comment on, um, you know, the whole issue about reading the Pledge of Allegiance in uh, Islam or Arabic. I mean, I was born, um, you know, uh, into the Islamic family, basically, but I never had those uh, same, uh, what do you call it, th those same ideas. I mean, this is America, for God's sake. Um, I'm a Nigerian-American, and at the same time, I believe this is an English-speaking country. And I just believe it's the politicians selling this whole thing, um, you know, making this whole thing look bad. There's no point, because you can't go to Saudi Arabia and say, oh, you know, you want to read whatever in English if it's in Arabic. You can't go to these other countries where, you you know, you have this crazy um, Islamic, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, I Islamic uh, uh, terrorist. You know, you can't go to their countries and say, oh, yeah, you know what, you know, I'm going to read this in my own language or whatever. So we should just face it. This is America. You know why you came to America. I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to be Nigerian. And I love everything about it. And, you know, it doesn't mean it's perfect. But you have to live within what it is. This is America. Let's live it as it is. Speak English. And if you have to speak Spanish, speak Spanish. But if what you have to read is in English, you have no choice. And we should stop changing these laws. It makes everybody look bad. Yom, so, excellent uh, call. There. Really excellent. And God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. 617, you see what I mean? I'm telling you, they're, they're phenomenal immigrants. 617-266-6868 is the number. Coming up next, oh, you know, a former Obama spokesperson goes on Brett Bear, dude, dude, to discuss Benghazi. You're not going to believe this one. Don't touch that dial. Let's take it to Angela in the newsroom. Welcome back to the Kuna Report, hour 2707 now on AM 680 WRKO and on 93.7 HD2, 617-266-6868 if you want to be part of the show. You know, I got to tell you, this is going from really bad to worse to now, frankly, almost humiliating and a national joke. Um, the Boston Herald, by the way, finally had a story on the Benghazi emails. Uh, I guess they followed up from, from my show the last couple days. As you know, a bombshell document, a smoking gun document, has now been found and released, whereby on September 14th, 2012, three days after the Benghazi terrorist attacks, two days before then-UN Ambassador Susan Rice was to go on the Sunday talk shows and put forth the administration's bogus, deceptive, lying narrative that this was all caused by an anti-Muslim video. The Deputy National Security Advisor, Ben Rhodes, in that email which was sent to all of Obama's inner political circle, including a spokesman, Jay Carney, that the focus now should be not on emphasizing a broader failure of policy, but as he put it, to blame the video, to make sure that the incident was rooted in the, in the Muslim, anti-Muslim Internet video. In other words, the White House fabricated and concocted this phony baloney excuse, this elaborate campaign of deception to distract the American people from what really took place. 
which was this was a coordinated, deliberate, premeditated attack by al-Qaeda on a U.S. compound in Benghazi that resulted in the, four, in the deaths of four Americans, including the first ambassador to be killed in over 30 years. This was in the midst of an intense re-election campaign, whereby the president was running on him having defeated al-Qaeda, dismantled al-Qaeda, and having killed Osama bin Laden. So had the public known really what had happened in Benghazi, it would have derailed and destroyed the narrative, and with it most likely defeated the president against Mitt Romney. He would have lost the election in November of 2012. So they had to concoct a lie, an elaborate lie. And after over 18 months, nearly two years, claiming that the anti-Muslim video bogus story came from intelligence agencies, we now know it never came from the CIA. It never came from the State Department. It never came from the intelligence community. It came straight from the White House. Somebody above Ben Rhodes. So yesterday on Fox News, dude, they sent out this former White House spokesman who also was a National Security Council spokesman who was involved in that email and involved in the prepping of Susan Rice so she would deliberately lie to the American people, Tommy Viter. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you saw the exchange yesterday. I swear, this guy looks like he's 22 years of age. I, he looks like he just came out of college. The way he talks, the immaturity level, the, the adolescent juvenile language and the reasoning. And I'm thinking, this man was a White House spokesman? Ay, 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 ay. This administration really is going from becoming a disaster to almost a bad skit on Saturday Night Live. So here is now former White House spokesman Tommy Viter basically getting hammered by Brett Baer as Brett Baer is just laying out all the facts about Benghazi and check out what his ultimate response and rebuttal is. Roll it, Cooks. Talking about. Yeah. According to the emails and the timeline, sure. the CIA circulates new talking points after they've removed a mention of Al Qaeda. Yeah. And then at 621, the White House, you, Me? add a line about the administration warning of September 10th of social media reports calling for demonstrations. True? Uh, I believe so. Did you also change attacks to demonstrations in the talking points? Uh, maybe. I don't really remember. You don't remember? Dude, this is like two years ago. We're still talking about the Dude, most mundane it is the thing process. That everybody is talking about. We're talking about the process of editing talking points. That's what bureaucrats do all day long. Dude, dude, we're talking about what happened two years ago. Dude, if I only said, dude, this was like two years ago. Dude, like, what are you, some kind of a California surfer? Add a line about the administration warning of September 10th of social media reports calling for demonstrations. True. Uh, I believe so. Did you also change attacks to demonstrations in the talking points? Uh, maybe. I don't really remember. You don't remember? Dude, this is like two years ago. We're still talking about the Dude, most mundane it is the thing process that everybody is talking about. We're talking about the process of editing talking points. That's what bureaucrats do all day long. He dude, dude, this was like two years ago, dude. Dude. Hey, come on, dude. Hey, Beyonce's got a new album out, dude. Get with it, dude. Hey, come on. This is the dear leader, dude. It's the perpetual rock star, dude. He's the president of the world, man. When they bring up George Bush and, uh, again, can we just say, dude? Yeah. That was like seven years hey, ago, dude. Dude, dude. Dude, that was, that was six years ago, dude. Dude. I, I, and now, by the way, just to show you what a liar. First of all, you can tell he's lying. Just if you see the interview, his eyes never blink. Never. Not once. Honestly, it's a bit creepy. You know, like, you can tell, like, he's, like, really straining to remember the talking points. Okay, so when they pin me down that I deliberately change demonstrations, attack to demonstrations. Because, you know, an attack is an attack, and a demonstration means something completely different. 
dude, dude, dude. That was like two years ago, dude. Hey, come on, dude. Okay, well, what about Putin invading Ukraine? Dude, that was like two weeks ago, dude. Dude, come this on, was dude. like two years ago. Dude, this was like two weeks ago, dude. Dude, this was like two years ago. This was like two years ago, dude. Dude. Okay, first of all, just to get his role in this. So he's involved also in the cover-up and the manipulation of the intelligence. There, He changes the word attack to demonstrations. An attack, a terrorist attack, is a hell of a lot different, dude, from a, quote, demonstration. A demonstration is if the Pelletier family give me their approval, is what I'm going to be leading on Boston Common to free Justina Pelletier. You know, people show up, they have signs, peaceful, nonviolent, and they do a little protest. Maybe they chant, maybe they sing, they spend a few hours, and then they leave. That's a demonstration, dude. An attack with Kalishnikovs and other weapons and rocket-propelled grenades whereby you're shooting, wounding, and killing people, is very different from a demonstration, a dude. Especially when four Americans have been killed, dude. And this isn't much just part of the mundane, just the mundane editing process. Uh, murder? No, that wasn't a murder. That was uh, a slap on the back. So, okay, we just edited murder to slap on the back. That's all. It just, what's the problem? That's, come on, everybody's lying at this administration. What, you're going you're gonna to pin me on it now? And again, this is what is absolutely incredible. Again. The second day in a row, Jay Carney comes out, and this moron, Tom Viter, how this guy ever got a job, honestly, if this is the future, if this guy represents the millennials, guys, guys and gals, let's go to New Zealand right now. Just don't bother, don't bother waiting for the next 15, 20 years. Trust me. Go to Canada, go to New Zealand, let's do Hong Kong, where, because this country, it's over. Uh, with, with, guy, with dudes like him. It's over. This country's finished. Okay, but let that go. This guy was going on yesterday, repeating Jay Carney's lie a second day in a row that the email wasn't about Benghazi. It was about supposedly all of these protests occurring over the Middle East. But the subject heading is Benghazi. You mentioned in the email about the Americans who died. Where did, did any other Americans die in any other attacks across the Middle East at that time? Am I missing something? Benghazi's on page two. Benghazi's on page three. Benghazi's everywhere. It's, it's all Benghazi. How stupid do they think we are? You have an adolescent president presiding over an adolescent regime that is populated by adolescents like this punk, Tom Viter. Dude. You know, honestly, this guy belongs on some uh, uh, California uh, uh, beach surfing. That's, that's where this guy belongs. This guy does not belong anywhere near the White House. So, and then, just to top it all off, just to show you the, the maturity level of this guy. So, dude, dude Viter... Sends out before he gets on Brett Bear's show, just before his appearance, I swear, he tweets this out. He's saying, oh, they've asked him to come on to his show to talk to him about Benghazi for a, quote, throwback Thursday thing. For a throwback Thursday thing. Seriously, dude, how? Oh, he talked about it. Okay, he talked about it on Fox and Friends. Okay, people on Fox and Friends, Elizabeth Hasselback on Fox and Friends this morning. I mean, everybody's just stunned. This is a spokesman for the White House? This, this arrested development uh, adolescent. Roll it, Cooks. He seemed as though he knew he was going to be going to see Brett. Uh, when you look at Tommy Vitor's tweet, it says here, Guessing Brett Baer invited me to come on special report to talk Benghazi as a hashtag throwback Thursday thing since it happened in 2012. But tune in. Did you just hashtag the death 
of four Americans, one of which happens to be sure. our American ambassador there? I mean, why would you hashtag that casually as a throwback Thursday? Does that bother you out there? Let us know. So we Look how they don't care about the death of four Americans. They're almost laughing in our face. 617-266-6868 is the number. Is Benghazi scandal? Now starting to close in on the administration. Is it Obama's Watergate? I want to hear from you. 617-266-6868. All of your calls next. Of social media reports calling for demonstrations. True? Uh, I believe so. Did you also change attacks to demonstrations in the talking points? Uh, maybe. I don't really remember. You don't remember? Dude, this was like two years ago. We're still talking about the Dude, most mundane it is the thing process. That everybody is talking about. We're talking about the process of editing talking points. That's what bureaucrats do all day long. The key your, part your is producers the, edit scripts the key multiple part is times. Hey, dudes, we're talking about four dead Americans, uh, dude. And how did they die, dude? And that it could have been prevented, uh, dude. 617-266-6868-724 on the great WRKO. Eric, you're up next. Welcome to the Cooner Report, dude. Good morning, dude. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad, sir. Uh, let's step back a teeny bit, Jeff, uh, and, and, and get out of the uh, Monday, morning, Monday morning quarterbacking mode here. Um, was there or was there not protests going on in the Middle East because of that uh, video? At that time, do I say it again, Eric? I mean, were, were there or were there not um, protests going on in the Middle East at that time because of that video? There was one protest in Egypt in Cairo, sponsored by the Muslim Brotherhood that Obama had put in power, that they alleged was about the video. But as Greg Hicks stated explicitly, as the CIA field officer on the intelligence officer on the ground stated explicitly, as Deputy National uh, Deputy CIA Director Mike Morell under oath stated explicitly, the anti-Muslim video had nothing to do with what took place in Libya. It was a complete non-issue. It was completely non-existent. Even in Cairo, it was an obvious uh, ruse, a pretext to go and protest, sponsored by the Muslim Brotherhood that Obama, as you know, put into power. So I don't understand. What's your point, Eric? Well, I think the point here is the fact that there's always these people out there that have been saying since day one that this Muslim video had absolutely, you know, nobody saw the video and it had absolutely no effect out there. It obviously had some effect out there. I mean, it wasn't just a little protest. I mean, the, the people in, in Cairo... It was a lot more than that. I mean, they tried to go in there and actually kind of do an assault, a mini assault on the American consulate there. I mean, there was some stuff happening. No, in that nothing situation. happened. I'm, I'm sorry. Nothing that's just ended up happening. No, because the people. Eric, because nobody died. Eric, nobody <clears throat> died. The consulate was not attacked. The consulate was not breached. And it was reported right away in the Egyptian press that this was literally orchestrated by the Muslim Brotherhood. Nobody yeah, took the anti-Muslim video thing seriously, even in Egypt. You know when they did take it seriously? And this uh, numerous press accounts uh, corroborate this. It was after the administration picked it up and played it up as being behind the Benghazi attacks. Then you saw protests all over the Middle East and in Pakistan and in Yemen and in Saudi Arabia and in the Palestinian territories. So you're saying that, that the pretext, that, that the video pretext in, in, in Egypt, that, that, that pretext, the video came after Obama said something about it and that was what it was? It, Eric, Eric I mean, it's very clear. Look, honestly, the, the, <clears throat> this, is, this is settled. I mean, I'm being serious. Even the New York Times concedes this that after Obama went on about the anti-Muslim video, it became, it became a big issue in the Muslim yeah, world. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that during the actual Cairo attack that was happening, Cairo protest that was happening, you're saying that that, Eric, that, Eric, that had nothing to do with the Eric, video. Eric, Eric, the Muslim Brotherhood staged a protest. It was orchestrated by the Muslim Brotherhood. They, came, they looked for a reason to protest. They found an 18-month video. Now, let's leave aside Cairo and Egypt. Regardless of that fact, to me, this is, honestly, Eric, this is bordering a little bit on the perverse. 
We have four Americans that were brutally murdered. Al-Qaeda attacked them. The CIA said it was Al-Qaeda. The State Department said it was Al-Qaeda. The intelligence agency said it was Al-Qaeda. Everybody knew it was Al-Qaeda. And this White House and this president and this administration deliberately lied, misled, and deceived the American people by inventing this so-called spontaneous demonstration triggered by an anti-Muslim video. They lied. And then they manipulated the intelligence. And they covered up the terrorist murder of four dead Americans. Now, I'm asking you, as a patriot, forget our political differences. Yeah. Is this not sickening? I think it's I think it's I mean, it's horrible any time anybody kills an American. No, 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 no. Anywhere, Forget Jeff, Americans not... dying overseas in a war. I'm not talking about that. No, I I, I agree with you. I think it's I, you know I think it's despicable that they, these people went in there and killed those Americans. I think it's so. Why did your president cover it up? Why did your president lie? Why did they concoct this phony My story of an anti-Muslim that... video? My feeling is that, it, that there was a CIA operation going on, and I think that they were trying to keep it. They're trying to keep it secret. I think that's what they were doing. They were trying to figure out ways to keep it secret. That's yeah, my exactly. No, no, no. On. on that, you're right. They were gun running, which is illegal and a criminal act. Well, but my yeah, point, I mean, this you know, only compounds... Reagan was gun running. I mean, Reagan was well, gun running. Well, 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 forget Reagan. Look, Eric, Eric, listen, look. Let me end this argument once and for all. Yeah, dude, Reagan, that was like 20 years ago, dude. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just saying, you're still saying it's illegal, but I mean, you know, presidents have been doing that for a long time. That's what we're saying. Eric, I mean, dude, dude, let me tell you this. You want to bring back slavery? Because we had it for 150 years, dude. They did it, dude. You want to put Americans in internment camps? Hey, dude, Roosevelt did it, dude. Just because something was done in the past doesn't mean it's right. And when it's being done by our president, violating the Constitution, violating our laws, literally breaking every law in the book, how is this not impeachable? How is this not worse than Watergate, dude? I think, because honestly, Jeff, I, I don't think this, I, I think this is a, a, you know, we have covert operations going on uh -huh. all the time. This is not uh -huh. very long. Uh-huh. Okay. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, I don't think it's an impeachable offense. How, how is the cover-up, let me ask you this, how is the cover-up of the terrorist murder of four dead Americans whereby we cook and manipulate the intelligence, whereby the president lies to the American people repeatedly during an election. How is this not the mother of all scandals? Why, what, what, I mean, I, I'm going to have to be like, uh, I, guess, I guess like Hillary Clinton here. What difference does it make if they were killed because of a terrorist attack or killed because of a protest? Because it's the I truth. Mean, it's still dead, Jeff. I mean, that, that's the point she was making in that fact. I mean, because if it was... Like so if they got killed in just a protest, Jeff, would that, would that make a difference? Eric, it was a terrorist attack by our mortal enemy, Al-Qaeda, in the middle of an election campaign when the president was campaigning that he had destroyed and dismantled Al-Qaeda. And then to cover up the murder of four dead Americans by our mortal enemy, they lied to the American people. And then you stand there and say, what difference does it make? Dude, I need a break. We all know they lied. The talking points are bogus. What we know is why they did it, because it was not the narrative that they needed for the election. What we don't know is why didn't they prepare for this? 9-11 is going to be a terrorist anniversary for the rest of our days on this planet. It's going to be a time for heightened awareness, increased attention, putting forces in position. The questions that should have been asked were, General Lovell, did your staff warn people about 9-11? General Lovell, did your people communicate with the State Department about the threats that Ambassador Stevens had already communicated? Dude! 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 You totally blew it, dude. Dude! Dude! Hey, Miss French, dude. Dude! 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 Party on, dude. Well, welcome back to the Cooner Report, 739 here on the great WRKO. 617-266-6868 is the number. Now, uh, I'm gonna, lines are loaded. I'm going to get to the calls in just a minute. Just think back for a second, because the timeline is, is, is all important. What has the administration been saying now for the last 18 months? That they were just mouthing what the intelligence was telling them. 
For 18 months, it's been the constant drumbeat. Well, no, we mentioned the anti-Muslim video because that's what the intelligence was telling us. That's what the CIA was saying, the State Department, all the the Pentagon, everybody kept saying the anti-Muslim video. Now it, we find out that's not true. State never said it. The CIA never said it. The intelligence agencies never said it. The only people that said it, concocted it, fabricated it, manufactured it, was the White House. So they've been lying now to us, not just about Benghazi, but for the last 20 years. Furthermore, it was Susan Rice, if you remember, on uh, uh, September 16th, on the Sunday talk shows, I'm just going by the intelligence. The intelligence is telling us it's an anti-Muslim video. But they never cited the intelligence. And now we have the smoking gun email. It didn't come from CIA. It didn't come from the State Department. It didn't come from the Pentagon. It came came from Ben Rhodes and David Plouffe and 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 the and Jay Carney and the political people at the White House. They lied, and for two weeks, the dear leader went on show after show, whether it be sixty minutes, all the way up to the UN on September twenty fifth. He was on David Letterman. He was on show after show up to the UN September 25th, continuing to blame the anti-Muslim video. And then that poor man was sent to prison. There are so many crimes being committed here, it's not even funny. But notice, all of the libs who talk about transparency in government and being honest to the American people, suddenly, when it comes to the dear leader, the da 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 uh, the dear leader, dude, dude, it was two years ago. No, here's what's happened. Okay, I'll tell you exactly what happened. September 11, 2012. Boom. 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 Mr. President, Benghazi's under attack. Ambassador Stevens, dead. Sean Smith, dead. The compound is overrun by Al-Qaeda. What do we do? Oh, my God, my entire re-election campaign has been based, premised upon us having defeated Al-Qaeda. If the American people find out, oh, but bin Laden is certainly not dead. Al-Qaeda is certainly not dead. But they're more than alive. They're killing our people in Benghazi. My re-election goes up in smoke. So now we have to concoct a lie. And so they come up with this anti find somebody, blame it on somebody else, but for God's sakes, don't blame it on me. Don't tell the American people the truth, because then I'm finished. We're seven weeks away from the election. And so he lies. And Hillary Clinton lies. And Susan Rice lies. And then Candy Crowley helps him lie against Mitt Romney in the debate. The media then props him up. They ignore the story. They deliberately buy this spin, this lie, to get him into the White House because they know all they got to do is get him past the finish line. Because then afterwards, once he's reelected and safely back in the White House, hey, dude, it was two years ago, dude. Oh, dude, it was two years ago. This was a crime perpetrated not only upon those in Benghazi, not only upon the victims. It was perpetrated upon the American people and upon America's democracy itself. This is how they stole the election and deliberately lied to the American people to get that con man back in the White House for a second term and the mainstream media and the political team at the White House, the president's men, were all in on it. This thing is a hundred times bigger than Watergate. And if every liberal or progressive was honest with themselves, deep down, they know it. 617-266-6868. That's why it matters, dude. Sly, you're up next. Thanks for holding. You're on the Kuna Report. Go ahead, sir. Uh, hey, Jeff. Um, listen, I, I do me a favor. I know you gave Eric plenty of time to uh, spit out poison and lies. Uh, so give me give me a, a minute here. Sure, I, I want to say something about this 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 lie about these protests about this 
um, anti-Muslim video and also about people comparing this to Reagan. First off, there was no protest anywhere, even in Cairo, about this anti-Muslim video. Nobody saw this video. I can't believe we're even debating it. Because if there was, you know how this left-wing media is. After those protests, they would have been on the ground constantly with a microphone and a camera talking to as many people as they possibly could. This would be documented. They would, they would say, oh, how did this Muslim video make you feel? Tell us how, tell us how it hurt your feelings. You know it, I know it, and Eric knows it. There is no footage. I haven't seen any reporter, any journalist, any news show with anybody on the ground talking to Muslim people in the Middle East or North Africa asking them how they feel about this Muslim video. It's a straight up lie. And I can't believe that it's even a debate. You know, guys like Eric, Eric is super happy that it's been, what, 18 months or two years since it happened because he's been waiting for this. He's been waiting for this time to go by so he could say, oh, well, it's been a long time now and people get things confused. I have nothing confused. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, second of all, I don't expect somebody like Eric to be able to understand the difference between what happened here with Obama versus the Reagan uh affair that happened, you know, with Iran. Let me break it down. Ronald Reagan had Americans over there that were getting tortured, brutally beaten and tortured every day. The guy lost sleep every night. He did what he did to get those guys home to save them. Versus Obama purposely, intentionally put American lives in danger to sacrifice them without caring about them at all because he had an agenda that he wanted to carry out arming our direct enemies that hit us on 9-11 and in other occasions that we were directly in war with to arm them and give them guns through Benghazi, into Turkey, into Syria. It's completely different. No regard for American human lives whatsoever versus what Reagan did, the only thing he could possibly do. And when Reagan, when this all came out, Reagan came out and he told everybody in his administration, answer every question as honestly as don't hold anything back. And that's what happened. So I, I, I was furious listening to that fool, Eric. That guy, I think that's the same Eric that always calls the the school teacher, right? Yeah, he's our resident liberal. Yeah, th you know what it is? The, the liberals in government are his, are, they're his daddy. Uh, Sly, great call. We heard the sirens in the background. I hope they didn't send the NSA to arrest you, Sly. Uh, stay safe. No, look, in a nutshell. Reagan lost sleep and did everything possible to try to rescue Americans who were being tortured and potentially could be killed. Americans in danger. Obama went to sleep while Americans' lives were in danger. That's, that's the fundamental difference. And in fact, don't even take my word for it. Dude, dude Tom Viter, the spokesman, came on and said no. In fact, remember they said he was in the situation room? He was so distraught he was in the situation room. Now Tommy Viter comes out, dude, says, no, well, no, in fact, uh, he, uh, he, I was in the situation room and the dear leader wasn't there. I don't know where he was, but he wasn't there. Roll Another lie. Roll it, Brittany. We're coming to protest. Brett. They had mortars Brett. and heavy weapons. Brett, a couple of things. One, I was in the Situation Room that night, okay, and we didn't uh, where the ambassador was definitively. In was fact, the president was a, in the Situation Room? No, and the the fact that your network at one time reported that he watched video feed of the of the attack as it was ongoing is part of what I think has been okay. well, a, let me, a let me get pattern to of that. inaccurate where was the in the White House. Let me finish my initial statement. Okay, the the notion that we could. Um, you know, 
divine motives from a drone feed, I think, is wrong. Um, and I also think that this idea that divine the military mode? had the capability to rescue those individuals but chose not to, I think, is extremely unfair, unfair to the military. Mm. Mm. Hey, dude, dude, that's a lie. General after general, after, hell, just yesterday, there was another hearing on Benghazi. Our general came out and said, we didn't even try. There was an air base literally 50 minutes away in Sicily. There were people in, in Tripoli ready to come. The order came for them to stand down. Reagan tried to save Americans whose lives were in danger. This man went to bed getting ready for a fundraiser on a live feed as he can see Americans being slaughtered. And this is our president? No, no. I, let's call it as it is. We have a traitor in the White House. He is the commander-in-chief. His people are being slaughtered. He didn't even give the order for us to send in the cavalry and rescue. We didn't even try. He slept like a baby. Because he had to hit the casinos and hit a fundraiser the next day in Vegas. Reagan loses sleep. This guy sleeps like a baby. That's You want to know the difference between the two men? One's an American. The other one's a traitor. That's the difference. Comrade John... How you are, comrade? Are you in uh, Gulag or are you in Benghazi now? No, 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 neither. I can't tell you where I am because they'll put me back in the Gulag, Jeff. <laughs> Dude, I know where he was. He was with the June gang up and in front of the widescreen. <laughs> it wasn't in the situation room. Here's the thing. I don't care what side of this situation. He didn't send help. Okay, that's it. Bottom line. Who gives the order to either go or stand down? The president. That is it, all right? Now, let's take a little uh, look at the mindset of a liberal, especially liberals like Eric. You worship a politician, Eric. That's your god. The lowest form of life on earth, to me, is a politician. I love Ronnie, but did I agree with everything he did? Far from it, because I'm not so weak, whereas I have to follow one man all the way off the edge of a cliff. Wow, comrade, this, I, think, I think this was your best ever. I'm really, you, buddy, you nailed it to a T. 617-266-6868. Liberals worship the almighty state. That's the difference between them and us. 752 on the great WRKO. Hey, dude, what difference does it make? All of your calls. 617-266-6868. Right after this short break. <laughs> Please all remember that Ambassador Chris Stevens was a grown-up, a serious professional yes. of sound mind. Yes. He decided to go out there to that risky yes. facility that night. He made that decision, which ambassadors have to make. It turned out to be a horrific situation he walked into. Mm -hmm. But the idea that somebody else should have been covering for him, that someone else should have had the army uh, the army there waiting to defend yeah. him, I think has gotten a little ridiculous. How what was the that? president even know he was going on that trip out I mean, there I don't, to, to big yeah, gas? Boy, are they dancing now uh, with that email? Look at them. Look at them now. Now they're getting more ridiculous by the day. Now, here's Nancy Pelosi. So now the piranha was asked. Well, you've got this smoking gun email. The administration's been lying now for God knows what, almost two, almost two years. What do you say now, Nancy? Benghazi? Who cares about Benghazi? Roll it, Brittany. Um, I haven't seen that, but what I will say is, again, diversion, subterfuge. Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Why aren't we talking about something else? Whatever was in that, what, what I know of what I've read in the press about the, um, uh, that those emails were very consistent with what was put out there before. I don't think there's anything new there. No, there's, there's no there. No, it's all consistent. Uh, they're lying. It's completely contrary to what the intelligence said, but hey, ben Benghazi, it's a distraction, subterfuge, uh, let's move on. Dude, dude, it's been two years, dude. Sean, you're up next, thanks for holding, you're on WRKO, go ahead. 
Steph, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, thank you, Sean. Uh, it, as far as the ambassadors go, there's nothing, there's, there's no position in the United States that is more honorable than an, an ambassador. You have the uh, the concerns in the United States and the whole country. It's a it, it's there's a warm place in everybody's heart for an ambassador. The problem with this thing is, is there's no one being held responsible. Fingers aren't being pointed at anybody who is responsible. Nobody's being held accountable. We we just our inaction is is it's horrible. We're, we're just we're not doing anything about it. The people aren't doing anything about it. The president that day did nothing about it. That's the problem. Whether it was a whether it was a lie about a, a video, or whether it, whether it was a, 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 a planned attack, it, that, that doesn't matter. What matters is that we hold somebody responsible for this. And I, it's just so frustrating to know that nobody is really doing anything about it, except for you on the radio. Sean, you want to know what the Obama administration is, the Obama regime? It's one big, massive mother DCF. Everybody's dying, and nobody gets held accountable. 617-266-6868. Speaking of DCF, coming up next, it's now been official. It has now been officially confirmed. Queen Olga, Olga Rache, she may even have gotten a better gig. That when she was a DCF commissioner, you're not going to believe what's happening with Olga Roche. Coming up next, let's take it to Angela in the newsroom. News at the top and bottom, talk in between. Wow, that's an interesting new take on this. This is AM680 WRKO, Boston.